Well, good morning, Journey Church. Well, really what I should say is good afternoon. We are so glad and excited that you are joining us online. And uh, Reagan in here, Pastor Reagan here and I, are going to give you a couple of announcements before we get started with everything. The first one is this. Hey, you can still use the Journey app, our church app. Uh, on that, you'll find a lot of cool uh, uses. Number one, you can find the sermon notes. Uh, you can have a Journey card. Since we're not here, there's a Journey card tab on there. And you can give online, which would be uh, important for all of us today. If you are being blessed by the ministry of the Journey Church, uh, please utilize that feature. Also, um, we are still thinking about how we're going to continue to keep up our winter wear drive that um, our missions ministry leader, Andrea Morris, is leading. So um, we're really not sure how that's going to go. So if you need more information, you can contact andrea.morris at thejourneychurch.net. Speaking of missions, um, uh, we often go to a place in Wilmington called Vigilant uh, Hope, and there's a particular project called the Port City Project. And you've been to that, right? Yes, I have. I've been multiple times. How did you like it? Um, I loved it. Um, I love that it stretched me, that I got to encounter things that I don't normally encounter and got to learn a lot more about people and about God. Well, it's really cool, too, because we're, we're helping people who are homeless. That's their main focus. But uh, they actually teach us how to be a blessing to people in our own town. So um, we're going to send a group this year, um, July 12th through the 18th. And we really need you to get on board with that. So, um, again, July 12th through the 18th, we need you to sign up. There's a deadline for a deposit of the last Sunday in April. So please get on board with that. Um, so glad you're here. This is an online thing. We're so uh, excited about what's going to happen next. And we really are um, powerfully drawn. We're so excited you're here. We're glad you're here. We are so glad that you could just be here. We're so glad you could be here. I'm so glad you could be here. We're so glad you could be here today. Hey, you know, generational ministry is very important to us. So today, Catalyst is actually going to be utilizing Zoom in order to have their meeting time today. If you need more information about that, you can contact Isaac.Carabello at thejourneychurch.net. Isaac is our youth pastor. And Reagan, tell us how we're going to work with kids today as far as ministry goes. Um, good morning. We're going to be um, doing multiple things um, throughout the time that we're unable to meet. Um, the first is that there will be video content uh, via a link that I will put in the comments um, that you can share with your kids either now on a different device or after you enjoy the service this morning. Um, I will also be reaching out to parents via the parent channel in our Slack um, with some resources for activities that you can do that connect to that video content um, either later today or later this week. All right, sweet. Well, hey, I'm looking forward. While we're videoing this now, it'll be online, and I'll actually be online with you this afternoon, so I'm looking forward to being present with you, even though we're online. All right, Journey Church, we will see you.
captives free. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the streets. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well in me. Well, good afternoon, Journey Church. So glad we could be together. Uh, you know, there's a lot that's gone on this week. It's kind of crazy, actually. But, uh, you know, I really find this to be true about God, that uh, whenever there's a crisis, he's able to turn a crisis into opportunity. He can take what's bad and turn it to good. And uh, that's, that's something for us to share. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that everything goes really well, that God has blessed us with this ability to be online so that we can share our online experience with anybody. It becomes a new place to invite people to because we have a big message. You know, for many of us, uh, we actually have a different life than we had before um, meeting Jesus. There was a before, there's a before life, and then something happens, and then there's a, a new life. And our, our old life actually has to die, and then our, our new life takes over. And the catalyst for this big change, the catalyst for this change is grace. Grace changes our position with God. Before, we really didn't have a relationship with God. We're kind of far from God, and I know that sounds like weird language, but we're not connected to Him. Grace comes, and we're, our position has changed. We're actually in Christ. We're, he is in us, and we are in Him. And this position changes us. It changes us. Before, we kind of are a slave to our desires. We're a slave to sin. We're we're, we're a slave to addiction. We're, we're a slave to things that, that kind of hold us down. Grace comes, and we're actually royalty because we're within the King, Christ. Before, we're kind of a, a spiritual wimp. I don't think we really see what's going on. Grace comes, and then we're actually a spiritual warrior. And Listen. I've been telling this story about my friend Corbett, about how I really went all in to follow Jesus. And uh, I remember praying, I want you to come in me. I was praying to Jesus to come into me. And I don't even, I don't even think I knew what it meant theologically or, or in reality at all. But I remember this. I remember my friend Corbett, who was talking to me, he said, Nate, Nate, things are going to change. I was separated at the time. He said, your family's going to get back together. And I thought, well, you really don't know my life at all. And then he said something else. He said, well... Nate, you've been fighting a battle that you were completely unprepared to fight. And all your life you've been fighting this battle unarmed, but now things are going to be different. And I thought, well, what do you mean? Are you talking about like the devil? And he goes, well, it's more complicated than that, but yeah. And you've been losing till today. See, Nate, the Holy Spirit is in you and everything is going to change. My friend Corbett had no idea that a year before that incident, a year before I prayed, uh, I was separated and I was extremely depressed. And I, I remember driving to a mall, which is not the place you want to go when you're depressed. I drove to a mall and um, there was a picture in the mall in a store of a man praying over his child. And I got that picture right here. And um, if you look at it, you can see it's a man praying over his son. In the background, it might be hard to see on this video, but there's an, 
there's an angel. And when I saw it, all I saw was this angel and a man praying over his son. And the caption read, the prayers of a righteous person has much power. And I thought, I am not a righteous person. And I was overwhelmed by it. And I just kind of walked out really, really sad. I was losing my family, and the whole year that year was just horrible. Corbett says, something has changed. Now listen to me online, whoever, whoever's watching, listen to me. Today I am going to give the most dangerous message I've ever given because everyone is in a spiritual battle. And if you are not in Christ, you're fighting it unarmed, like me. In Christ, you move from being a spiritual wimp to being a spiritual warrior. Grace changes us from being a spiritual wimp to being a spiritual warrior. Therefore, your purpose is to live as a spiritual warrior. Would you pray with me? Father, I know, I know this is going to be hard for people to hear. I know, I know that there are people, while they're watching this, they know that they're fighting a battle that they just can't win. And today I am going to declare the truth that in you we receive a power that is greater than anything we'll ever come against. Greater than this great big pandemic that we're facing because that's just something that's happening. That is not a spiritual battle, but evil uses it for evil purposes. So today, Lord, I pray that you speak into the hearts and minds of everyone who's watching, everyone who's together with us online, and all of our families, Lord, I pray that you, you speak to our hearts and draw us to you so that we may live in you in power that you give us as spiritual warriors. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are actually uh, talking about a particular uh, book of the Bible, a particular letter written by a guy named Paul, and he wrote it to a church in Ephesus, people who were, who were both Jews and non-Jews, and they had begun to trust Jesus. They were experiencing this grace. They had a life before, and then something happened. Uh, they experienced God, and then Paul says, okay, Something has happened to you, therefore. And so in the letter, there is, he talks about what God has done, and then therefore, there is a therefore. And that's what this letter is about. And it's true for us today. When we follow Jesus, when we receive this gift of grace, there is a therefore. And, and I'm not kidding about this power thing. So take a look at this verse with me. It says this. It says, In him you were also sealed with a promise of the Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. So I want to talk about what this means. So um, the best part of this is, and when you believed. You see, um, whenever someone was giving out orders or authority, they would put the orders on a scroll, they would wrap the scroll up, they would pour wax on it, put a seal on it, and the seal indicated the amount of power, the power that, that those words had. Paul says, there is power in you because the Spirit of God is in you when you believed. When you receive grace, the moment you receive grace, when you say, I'm in Jesus. And I said that thing, when I asked Jesus, God, come in me, I had no idea of the implications of it, but I believed. When you believe Jesus has lived, died, he's risen. He lives now and he reigns when you put all your trust in that, when you're saying, I got nothing but Jesus. When you believe, God's Holy Spirit lives in you at that moment. And it, it really changes everything. It changes your position. You know, we talked about how it changes you from slave to royalty. Well, here's something powerful. Before you don't have this relationship with God, because of grace, now you are in Christ and Christ is in you. You're a child of God. And because you're a child, you have an inheritance. And inheritance means power. Inheritance means power. What does this power look like? 
Paul describes it like this in this verse. It says this, he exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens. Far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and, given, and every title given. Uh, not only for this age, but also in the one to come. And so what he's saying is this, is that the power that raised Jesus from the dead, that gives him the authority over all things, because of grace, it's in you. Grace gives you this power. And it's not your power. It's actually the power of God in you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that power is in you. It's in you. And it raises us up. And I had no idea when my friend Corbett was telling me that that's what was coming. It is by the authority of the Holy Spirit in you by grace that you have victory victory in Jesus. Now, it's kind of like this. This is the hard part. The battles are not over. They're not ended. In 1814, there was a, there was a battle in New Orleans. Uh, a man, a general named Andrew Jackson, arranged his troops to take their stand outside New Orleans. What Andrew Jackson didn't know was that the war they were fighting, we call it the War of 1812, it was already over. A settlement had been reached. There was no need to fight the battle, but Jackson didn't know it. And so he arranged his troops to take their stand, and he won the battle. We as followers, we need to know that Jesus has won the battle. Death is ultimately the end, but not for those who trust Jesus, who have received this grace, this leaning in of God to give us life. We have won the victory, and this victory can't be taken away by, by sickness, by broken relationships, by pandemics. This victory is still ours in Christ. And this authority, this authority in us gives us a way to be spiritual warriors when before we were just spiritual wimps. Therefore, and this is what Paul says, so there's a therefore Paul says, therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to live the life worthy of the calling you have received. And he's saying, now you know this, you're a spiritual warrior, it's time to suit up. Here's how he says it. He says it like this, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the, of the devil. That's crazy. There I was standing there talking to my friend Corbett, and I was like, the devil? Are you serious? Why the devil? Because this is supposed to be some ultimate evil. Why would he be interested in me? And my friend looked at me and said, no, Nate, you don't know what God can do with a heart that's fully given to him. But the enemy does, and he's just looking for someone to kill. In fact, you need to know, Nate, it's not as simple as just one entity. There's an army behind it. Paul talks about this too. Here's what Paul says in the very next sentence. He says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against, our, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. That's intense. We are all, you are all, in a spiritual battle. Here's something in, I didn't really grasp. Sometimes if you don't know you're in the spiritual battle, you might be already defeated because the battle is going on whether you like it or not. Peter says this about our enemy. He says that the devil goes around like a prowling lion looking for someone to devour. Knowing that's true, you're going to have to suit up. You're in the battle. There's no escaping it. So here's how you suit up. First, stand. Remember I talked about Andrew Jackson took his stand. We, we fight when we're in this battle, we are to stand. Stand, stand therefore with the truth like a belt around your waist. Now, some people hear this word truth and, and there are many um, 
traditions that say the truth is merely uh, this written word, this revealed word of God, and they call it the word of God. But actually, that's only part of the package, you see, because another word of God is what we call Jesus. He's the word made real. This is the written word. And so when we have this, we have this revealed word. We also have in us the Holy Spirit, who is the source of all truth. And then, and check this, this is beautiful. When we're together as a community, we have one another with the Holy Spirit in us, helping us guide one another in truth. Truth from the Holy Spirit, truth from the word, truth from the community of believers. It's how we bring our center together. It holds everything together so that we can stand. You know, when you're, when, I don't know if anybody's done any martial arts, but one of the things they really try to work on you developing is your core, because from there, everything emanates. All your strength, all your balance, your truth, the truth from God's revealed written word, from his Holy Spirit in you, from the community is your core. It holds you together. And then having that core, that truth around you, uh, you want some body armor. So Paul says this. He says, righteousness. Wear righteousness like armor on your chest. And your righteousness doesn't come from your own actions. No, righteousness comes from Jesus. Jesus who has lived, died, risen. He lives now and he reigns. For those who receive this grace, it's like they receive a, imagine a robe of white, of righteousness that you wear. And that is your defense. It, it protects your vital organs, so to speak. It, it holds you in. It is your safety net. It is your hope. The righteousness of Jesus, not your own. You can't earn it. So with the belt of truth and with this, with this body armor of righteousness, the next thing Paul says is this. He says, and your feet sandaled with the readiness of the gospel of peace. You know, I had some friends, and when I first really started getting involved, learning about Jesus, and I was reading the Bible, I had some friends, and they would always say this. They were, uh, they were from a particular uh, tradition, and they would say this. When they were in spiritual warfare, they would say, I plead the blood of Christ. And that freaked me out. I don't know what that means. I had pictures of all kinds of weird things with blood and stuff and so, But it actually has some merit. And so here's what this is about. Look, when you're accused, you usually make a plea. You need to know that your enemy uses two major ways to attack you. Lies and accusations. Sometimes the accusations are lies. Sometimes the accusations are true. But lies and accusations. And Paul's saying, doesn't matter. Stand. Stand in this truth that Jesus has lived and died and risen and lives and reigns. And he's done it because of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have life forever. Stand. And this gospel, this good news that Jesus has done this, this is what you stand in. Your plea is not about what you've done, but about what he's done. So with the belt of truth, with this body armor of righteousness, with the, this feet fitted with the shoes of, uh, of the gospel of peace, the next thing Paul says is this. In every situation, take up the shield of faith from which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. I've said before that faith is built in you by God. So we take our little bit of faith and we meet with God's faithfulness. And God grows our faith. When you're under attack, when, when, when doubts come, when things happen and it just rattles you, going to God with all you have, even if it's just a little, is powerful defense against the accusations that try to destroy you. Faith, faith is what meets the doubts head on. Not that doubts aren't important. In fact, in fact, doubts should be met with faith. You should embrace the doubts and then forge it in the relationship because, listen to me, God shows up. He forges your faith. So with the shield of faith, with, this, with the breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, and the belt of truth, Paul adds this. He says this, take the helmet of salvation. And here's what this is about. Our faith is both something we experience and it's intellectual. 
you can trust, you can know that God is the one who saves. And knowing, knowing, having that experience of knowing, we can now stand and we can fight. And here's how we fight. This is important. It says this, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, most people think of this sword of the Spirit as uh, this. And I've, I've been to conferences and everybody says, hold up your sword. But this is not your sword. Um, your sword, your sword is this. With your intellect, reading this revealed Word. This word here means the word spoken out loud. When you're in doubt and you're leaning on your faith and you want to speak against those things, that has power. So when you say it out loud, when someone says, Nate, you can't be saved, I go, you know, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. That's speaking the word out loud, and it has power. That's why it's so important to memorize Scripture. It is powerful. When you speak it out loud, that is the power. That's how you attack back. That's how you take your stand. It's what Jesus did when he was attacked personally by the devil. He actually spoke Scripture out loud, and that's what we should do as spiritual warriors. In order to exercise all of these things together, in, all of, in order to, to shape and develop our skills, you stand, and you stand in prayer. Paul says this, pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession with the saints. Pray also for me, that the message given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. Let me stop right there. He's saying, pray, pray for yourselves, pray for me. So we at the Journey Church should pray for our lives and pray for each other. It is vital. It is vital that we pray for one another. He goes on, for I am an ambassador in change. He's saying that he is fighting the spiritual battle for God. Pray that I might be bold enough to speak about it as I should. Journey Church, we have friends and family and so much going on. We must, we must pray. We must pray for our families, pray for our sons, daughters, pray for our grandchildren, pray for our friends, pray for our co-workers, pray for the friends that we met and built and developed here at the Journey Church. Pray for the Journey Church as a whole. Pray for our country, pray for our mayor. Pray for our president. Pray for the Speaker of the House. Pray because we are in a spiritual battle. The battle is not on a political scale. Not really. The battle is not out there. So much of the battle is in our homes. And we don't know it. And we're walking in defeat. But grace, grace changes everything. Grace changes us from a spiritual wimp to a spiritual warrior. Therefore, Journey Church, live like a spiritual warrior. I want to leave you with a couple of, a couple of questions. Uh, typically, when we meet together, we have a time of reflection, but I want you to take all the time you need. Maybe you can write these down. If you have the Journey app, you'll have these copied, but here's what I want you to think about. Number one, have you been feeling powerless? Have you been facing things and you're like, I just don't know how I'm going to do anything, how I'm going to move forward? Can you trust God to lean in with his life and power? Now, I need to say something important. None of the things I've told you matter without Jesus. You will not, on your own, win any spiritual battles. So listen. I want to say a prayer. And if you're at home, you can say this prayer with me. Father, I am unable on my own to do it anymore. It's too hard. I don't even know if what Nate is saying is true, but I just know it's too hard. I know what he's talking about with my family is hurting or my, my health is failing. I just know what he's saying, and I can't do it. I need you to come into my life right now. 
Lord Jesus, come into my life. I want this grace poured into my life like Nate has talked about. And I'm needing you to do it right now. I'm praying in your name. All I got is you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, hey, would, on the Journey app or on the link that we provided, can you just let us know that you prayed that prayer? We would like to pray for you too as our new brother and sister in Christ. And I'm praying, I'm praying God moves in your heart and calls you to his great purpose that you can know, that you'll no longer have to be a spiritual wimp, but instead a spiritual warrior. Be blessed, Journey Church.
I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. 